waves all over the course, so that's why we have those big boats. Well, there, New Zealand says it all, doesn't it? Uh, they won the Olympics, but a different partnership. World Cup leaders, and we'll meet the crew that represent New Zealand very shortly. So, over on the far side here, Francesco Fossi, Romano Battisti, this season's European champions. So, a step forward in Seville. Can they make another one and reach the podium here? Bill Lucas for Great Britain in the bow is parted by Matt Langridge in the stroke seat. Of course, Matt, an Olympic bronze medalist from the very eight in which Greg was seated last year. They're in two. In lane three, the controversial selection. So it seemed at the beginning of the season, Michael Arms on the right, Robert Manson in the stroke seat. And of course, the Olympic champions were Nat Cohen and Joe Sullivan. And these two have got that berth. And they haven't let the side down yet. Germany, represented by the former world champions of 2009, Eric Knittel and Stefan Kruger. If Knittel's back is all right, you've always got to fear this partnership. Then uh, Lithuania, Mindaugas uh, Griskonis. He's on the left of your picture, multi-European singles champion. And his partner, Salius Ritter, who was uh, runner-up this year in the Europeans and uh, sixth in the Olympic Games with uh, Machinskas. And finally, least, last but not least, Nichols, Hoff and Shetil Borch, seventh in the Olympic Games, third in, oh sorry, eighth in the last World Championships. And uh, two men who, if it goes right, Italy, even though they're in lane six, Great could Britain, just squeak for the podium. New Zealand, Germany, New Zealand with two golds Lithuania, already from their eight crews. Norway. Attention. A real quality field then in the double skull. As you say, the Germans, I think, when they're on form, they could be very dangerous, but the New Zealanders have been the leaders so far this year. I'm interested to see just how well they can work together. They're a much tidier looking double than the two who won the Olympic gold medal last year from New Zealand. And I think that might be the sort of thing that's getting them in the selected position. Here we see the Germans. There's a little bit more of a tug towards the finish, a little bit more of a, of a kind of wrench that just makes that boat bounce in the water a little bit more than they probably want it to. Of course, these two Kiwis were in the Olympic Games in London. They were part of the New Zealand quad that finished seventh, winning the B final. And of course, they won both World Cup regattas in Sydney and in Eastman a couple of weeks ago. So that's why they've got the yellow vests of the Samsung World Cup leaders. But on the near side, just have Norway. a look at the Norwegians. Not very tidy, those left blades. Look how deep they go in there. That the spoon goes in, then half the loom goes in as well. So, really, you only want the painted bit to be going into the water. And that's the sort of thing that I think as the course goes on, that's just where inefficiencies creep in. And that's where you use too much energy. You're using up too much energy. Yeah, they're going to get tight in their forearms. Here we go. We're having a good look at it now. But those blades to me just look like they're dragging out of the water and it's just gonna be very hard to be able to keep that going the stroke rate's already down the gearing looks hard so that they're using their muscles really to me a little bit more than they they should be rather than just being able to be a bit more dynamic and a bit more springy but they've just about got there uh, through the first quarter there ahead of Lithuania so the action on the near side New Zealand in third place but still early days when you race like this over 2,000 meters it's like starting with a full tank of petrol and uh, it's a question of how you use that petrol to the greatest advantage and there you can see the kiwis easing now towards the lead michael arms and robert uh, manson coached by calvin ferguson and these two well as i said they haven't put a foot on and won both in the world cup for the second new course record at henley and they're both 23 so i'm sure this is where the likes of Dick Tonks, who has the overall vision, is looking and saying, yeah, this is the crew maybe for Rio. Yeah, I think that, that there's got to be a crew for Rio, and they want to be taking control of the race now in this second 500. That looks like exactly what they're doing. We saw them doing exactly the same stroke rate as Germany, but they're just a little bit more efficient, or at least they're giving it a little bit more effort. One of those two things to get their boat speed to be higher, which is why we can see it there on the screen. That's why they've been able to move out to a small lead as we do see unfortunately these Norwegians just starting to fade now because they're not able to keep up that pace they've got interesting to see the British have dropped back into last place but whether they'll be able to move on Lithuanians here 
big, strong man in the stroke seat looking to try and harness that power and keep up with the pace, which they're doing very well here. Coming to the halfway point, and that's a very effective second quarter there by the Kiwis. Lithuania, Viscornis and Britta. Again, they've got three men, and they mix and match, if you see what I mean, but they've had not a bad effort. They're two from the bottom of your picture there. Then you've got the Germans, then the New Zealands, and then fading Great Britain, that's disappointing. Italy, though, Fossi and Battisti still just about in touch. Battisti, who partnered Sartori in the Olympics to take silver. Yeah, so I'm surprised to see the Italians not pushing on a bit strong. We've got an Olympic silver medalist in the double skull. You'd like to think perhaps they might look to show here in the second 500, sorry, third, third 500, second half of the race. So the Italians are trying to break contact with the British and get into this bronze medal battle. Here are the Lithuanians uh, facing you there, Salas Ritter. He's a big boy, isn't he? He is a very big man. <laughs> and you can see he gets hold of it and then he looks to lever it. He used to lever that using that big, strong back. But the Italians have moved strongly now in this third quarter and they are making that move through. So we have a look there at Eric Nittel and Stefan Kruger. The rate's high, they tend to look a little frenetic, don't really hold on to the finish as well as you might hope they would. And I think that's the sort of thing that just means they just lose a little bit of pace. For them, it's a question, is it a going day? If it's a going day, then almost anything's possible, as they showed in Poznan in 2009. But unfortunately, there have been too many really good going days for them. But over on the far side, the Italians really responding quite well there with 500 minutes to go. And they're just there, aren't they, in silver medal position. They've done really well. You asked through that in lane one to focus on their job, not to twist and turn and get involved, just get on with it. Yeah, that's right. It's difficult being over there in lane one. You're out of the race, um, so you don't want to be looking over here. It's too far to look, so hopefully we see them here. Heads down. Oh, no, they're both <laughs> having a look now I've said that. So they want to just have their heads down. Keep sculling well, keep moving together with that slightly hunched-looking Italian style that they have. Don't really get their shoulders going back through. But they've managed to keep moving up into silver medal position. Now they get the, the roar of the home crowd, or the, the big roar of the crowd, as they come here heading up towards the last 250. Time, I think we said a little bit more about Michael Arms and Robert Manson because they are at the moment in a class of their own. Yeah, they're out there in front. They've done the, they've done the big effort. Now they just want the finish line to come. They're going to be hurting as we have a look here. Back in with Lithuania, taking a look to their right, looking to pick up the pace as it comes to this final dust up. And I think these medals are still anybody's after the New Zealanders. Yeah, the Italians, as you say, disconnected. So they've got the disadvantage now. It really is hurting. The legs are burning, the arms are burning, the lactate's building up. This is pain, this is mind over matter. The New Zealanders are leading, the Italians are on the far side, are on the charge again. The Germans are alongside the Lithuanians. The angle is dissected there, we're coming to the line, they're right in front, looking straight out of our commentary box. It looks like the near side, and the Lithuanians doing really well. Oh, Italians, Lithuanians, and Germans. Is it in that order? The Italians found a little bit extra. The Italians had a very good third quarter for me, which is where they really got back into it, and then they were able to just about keep their position. And that's now, what got them up into that silver. Now, did the Lithuanians get Germany? It's impossible to tell. But uh, whilst we wait for that, well, what a fantastic season. All you've got to do now, boys, is go home, get ready, go to South Korea and pick up the world title. I think there's a little bit more to it than that. I think there's a fair bit more to it than that. They've, got, they, they've had a great season, though. Yeah. Great trip over here to Europe. I think they'd be very pleased with that. Interesting to see the Italians there clapping their hands as opposed to the Germans, who make it look hard work, even when they're doing it. And they when they stop, you can really see how hard it was. They don't know whether they're on the podium or not, and neither do the Lithuanians. And for that matter, neither do we. Here we get it. Now, the Lithuanians are closest to you, the Germans two away. You see the Italians on the top. Oh, that is... It's, we don't know quite where the line is. If, if you look at anything, look like the Germans possibly on the surge yeah, of the boat. I would, I would agree. The Lithuanians may just be unlucky. Yeah. Well, Knittel and Kruger. They don't do it the easy way, but they've got there. But all credit also to the Lithuanians. I think that was a really good effort from them. Yeah, it was a good effort from them. Having not, they've had to race an extra race. Um, obviously, the Germans went direct through with these New Zealanders. So um, I think a good learning exercise for Lithuanians. Maybe they'll be able to settle their team down now. 
gold medal number three for New Zealand. Yeah, absolutely. News. Great, great performance by the New Zealand team. So they'll be gobbling up points here in the Samsung World Cup rankings, um, trying to close on Great Britain, but just shows you what a fantastic squad of athletes they've got. Yeah, they've had a fantastic program now for, uh, well, I think since 2009 really was when they first really announced themselves on the world stage. And it just keeps coming and coming from New Zealand. New athletes just shows a great system, great conditions they've got down there in Carapiro, and they're producing the results. Well, wherever you are down there, if you're with us in, well, what should we say, Cambridge, Dunedin, in Invercargill, Auckland, Wellington, Picton, uh, you can raise a glass to another gold medal winning crew.